Triad Multiple Listing Service. This very important session covers the Triad MLS compliance, rules, and the fee schedule. The Triad MLS rules document and information about the common compliance policy is available by using help found in Matrix responsive menu bar. Participants and subscribers using Matrix have agreed to the terms of service, which includes their agreement to abide by all Triad MLS rules. We also encourage that participants and subscribers use this link, compliance information, to read about the listing data checker system, LDC grace dates, and when necessary, this training video can be reviewed by using the link provided. Are all Triad MLS rules enforceable? Yes. Addendum A of the Rules and Regulations is the Common Compliance Policy and Fee Schedule. The purpose of this policy is to ensure the integrity of the MLS, including accuracy of its data. Compliance enf enforcement is subject to a service agreement between Triad MLS and the shareholders or subscribing associations. It would be wise to carefully read all the rules, the policy, and this fee schedule. The fee schedule lists all three categories of rule violations. A term you must be familiar with is compliance department. The staff in these departments oversee the implementation of the compliance policy and the fee schedule. Compliance staff cannot interpret rules or override violation notices. When participants or subscribers are issued fines for rule violations, they are issued by the appropriate association. Associations also collect fines. Appeals and hearings are also handled at the association level. Who is your compliance department? That is determined by who you pay your MLS fee to, those paying GRRA. The GRRA staff is your compliance department, while those paying HPRAR or WSRAR, your compliance department is the Triad MLS staff. Not only does compliance mean following all the Triad MLS rules, but also requires submitting documentation when requested within two business days of the request. LDC, the Listing Data Checker System, is the automated system designed to vi validate the quality and accuracy of listing data. Violation notices are issued by the automated system or by the Compliance Department staff manually. Three types of violation notices can be issued. The first being a courtesy notice. Courtesy notices are issued manually. Listing agents should check their listing for accuracy. If changes are needed, the listing can be edited making the corrections. Finding correctable notices provide a grace period of one business day to correct the violation. If the violation is not corrected within the grace period, the fines will be issued. Finding uncorrectable notices. The fine is issued immediately and there are no grace periods for correction. LDC notices look like this. If one is received, the type of notice will be at the top. Please read the entire notice carefully. Questions about received LDC notices can only be responded to via email. Do not call Triad MLS or the local association, but reply to the received email notification or send an email to your compliance department directly. Here's a look at three violation categories. Category one violations are related to listing information provided by a participant or subscriber. Category one includes sections 1.2, 1.2a, section 5, and 5.1. What is prohibited in the Triad MLS system? Names, phone numbers, email addresses, website addresses, including the use of embedded, overlaid, or digitally stamped information, references to websites and hyperlinks of any kind. Where is this branding information not allowed? Listing photos, virtual tours, and this includes signage of any kind, superimposed branding, and embedded data. Branding information cannot be in the public remarks data fields or the direction fields. Why the restrictions? This information is included in IDX appearing on all participants' websites. They also appear on portals such as Realtor.com and Homes.com. And this information is also included when other agents email listings to their clients. 
When a listing agent receives the LDC notice regarding violation of Category Rule 1, 1.2, they are given one business day to remove the prohibited information. A warning is issued and probation for the remainder of that calendar year. If the information is not removed or the same rule is broken within the calendar year, fines will be issued according to the fee schedule. Sections 1.2a, 5, and 5.1. Compensation is forbidden in the MLS. References to cooperating compensation cannot be included on any listing using the public remarks section, agent-only remarks, not in or on photos, in the photo caption section, or virtual tours. Compensation information cannot be included in any addendum or document uploaded in the MLS. Cooperating compensation cannot be funneled through any third-party service by using Triad MLS, including, but not limited to, Showing Time, Showing Time's Office Manager System, or Savvy Card. Upon receiving notice or discovery of potential violations in regards to offering compensation in the MLS, steps will be taken to remove any information that is considered unlawful, breach of the rules, or infringement of intellectual property rights. These compensation rules are also Category 1 violations. The first offense carries no penalty, but an additional does as detailed in the Common Compliance Policy Addendum A. Untimely Status Change, Section 1.2.1. This rule does apply to all MLS statuses. When a property is under contract, the choices for listings firms are DDP, Due Diligence Period, Pending AB, Pending Accepting Backup Offers, Pending, Short Sale Contingent, and for New Construction Marketed in the Proposed Construction Status, Proposed Construction Pending. This rule also applies to Closed Status, Temporarily Off the Market and Withdrawn. When must the listing status be changed to one of the pending choices? Triad MLS rule requires the status must be changed to one of the pending choices within two business days of the executed offer to purchase and contract. When does the status be changed to closed? The closed date is defined as the date the new deed is recorded at the courthouse. That is officially closing in North Carolina and the Triad MLS rule states that within three business days of receiving notice that the deed has been recorded, the listing status must be changed to closed. Section 1.2.1 contains the definition and rules for all listing statuses. Here's a scenario that all Triad MLS participants and subscribers need to be aware of. I was the buyer's agent, but I had to contact the seller directly, negotiate the offer with the seller, and was the only agent directly involved with the closing. Are there any Triad MLS rules I must follow in these transactions? Yes, and they are spelled out in Section 2 of the Rules and Regulations, the Selling Procedures. Appointments for showings are required. All appointments for showings and all negotiations with the seller for the purchase of listed property shall be conducted through the listing broker except under the following circumstances. And these are spelled out in section 2.A. If after reasonable effort, the cooperating broker cannot contact the listing broker or his or her licensee, then the cooperating broker may con contact the seller directly and Section B addresses how to handle negotiations. It is highly recommended that all participants and subscribers read Section 2 very carefully. Always make every effort to work directly through the listing agent indicated in the MLS unless otherwise instructed. If the listing agent cannot be contacted, try to contact the office broker in charge unless otherwise instructed. Only after reasonable efforts have failed, Triad MLS Rule Section 2 allows for contacting the seller directly, but pay very close attention to what is required of that cooperating broker. Also pay very close attention to the agent-only remarks. When this is displayed in the general information section of a listing, please read what the listing agent has posted. Occasionally, the listing agent will be given permission and instructions for contacting the seller directly for showing appointments and to negotiate offers. Reading agent-only remarks before showing a property is so very important. Section 2.5 details reporting sales to the service. Here's a tip for all cooperating agents that contact the seller directly 
as allowed in scenarios that fit 2A, 2B, and 2.5. Keep very good records. Keep copies of emails that you send to the listing agent. These emails will be dated and time-stepped. To be clear, the status change rules apply to all listings submitted in the Triad MLS service. LDC Untimely Status Change Notice. This is a violation that cannot be corrected. And the first violation notice is a warning and probation for the remainder of that calendar year. Upon a second notice for the untimely status change, the fine will be automatically issued. Failure to pay any Category 1 fine, the association will bill an additional $10 per month. Category 2 violations relate to submission of required listing. Triad MLS accepts all these property types, residential, vacant land and lots, multifamily listings, commercial improved and commercial vacant land, residential rentals. The mandatory requirement is that all residential listings, including new construction, multifamily listings, and those vacant land and lot listings that are in the Triad MLS primary jurisdiction are mandatory submissions. Commercial and rentals are optional entries. While participants and subscribers are encouraged to submit all listings in any location that the listing agent holds a valid real estate license, the Triad MLS submission rules apply to our primary counties, Wilkes, Surrey, Yadkin, Davie, Stokes, Forsyth, Davidson, Rockingham, Guilford, and Randolph. Category 2 rules include the mandatory National Association of Realtors Clear Cooperation Policy. You can read the entire policy along with the NAR guidelines and the frequently asked questions on the NAR website. Here's the top, the first tip on how to avoid receiving a clear cooperation policy violation notice. If the listing firm is taking an in-house listing, also referred to as office exclusive, the seller must give written authorization in the listing agreement. And they must also sign this mandatory office exclusive addendum. This mandatory addendum is found by using the help link in the in, on the Triad MLS matrix site, opening the Triad MLS form section. It also requires that this form be filed with the listing agent's compliance department within one business day of marketing the listing. Submit the paperwork to your appropriate compliance department. Tip number two, when the seller authorizes office exclusive, remember there can be absolutely no public marketing by anyone. The listing can only be marketed to other agents within that listing firm and to the, those client agents' clients. Late listing entry is another Category 2 rule. Section 1.0 states, Listings of real property of the mandatory property types listed below, which are listed subject to a real estate broker's license and are located within the mandatory listing area of the multiple listing service, are taken by participants, must be submitted to the Triad Multiple Listing Service, here and after called the Service or MLS, by entering into the online system and notice to all participants within one calendar day after the latter of the effective date or the marketing date shown on the listing agreement. The listing agreement must include the seller's authorization to submit the agreement to the service. Category two violation notices are not correctable. The listing agent will receive warning and probation for the remainder of that calendar year. Upon a second violation of the same category two rule, Fines will be automatic according to the fee schedule. Non-payment of a Category 2 violation results in the listing agent's service to the MLS being inactivated. The fines categories found in Addendum A do increase with each category. Category 3. These relate to providing unauthorized access to the MLS and or its services. There are no warnings or probation periods. Fines are issued automatically. 
What happens if a tried MLS participant or subscriber allows anyone for any reason to access Matrix using their credentials? A violation notice is automatically issued with the fine for the violation rules section 9.3 password security. Coming soon advertising is only to be used when a listing is not available for showings on the date the listing firm begins public marketing. Facts about using the term coming soon. The seller must authorize this in the written listing agreement. The maximum number of days coming soon can be used is seven calendar days. And the mandatory coming soon no-show authorization form must be completed with the listing agreement and attached. Coming soon no-show listings must be entered into the MLS offering cooperation, but not showings at this time. Within one calendar day after the latter of the effective date or the marketing date shown on the listing agreement. Avoid Category 3 Coming Soon No-Show violations by completing this mandatory Coming Soon No-Show authorization form with the listing agreement. All tried MLS forms are accessible here using Matrix Help and the Triad MLS Forms section. Listing agents cannot allow any showings while using Coming Soon. There can be absolutely no open houses while in the Coming Soon no-show status. Violating the Coming Soon no-show rules apply to the listing agent as well as the showing agents. Can a tried MLS user co-list a property? Yes, as long as the other firm is also a participant or subscriber to Triad MLS. Co-list with someone who is not a subscriber of Triad MLS violates rule section 1.17. Another category three violation is non-compliance with the MLS choice waiver found in section 6.1.1 of the rules and regulations. Category 3 fines are automatic, with the first being $1,000, the second $3,000. A third violation for the same rule, the agent will be suspended for six months, must take mandatory training, and attend a hearing with their local association. Non-payment, the MLS service will be inactivated. Additional rules to be very aware of. Participants and subscribers to try at MLS must provide required consumer disclosures of compensation. Please read carefully sections 1.02 and 2.01. These disclosures are required in a listing agreement and buyer agreements. Rule 2.0.2. Triad MLS participants and subscribers must enter into a written buyer agreement fully disclosing the expected compensation prior to touring a home. Rule 5.2 and 5.3 detail that using MLS data or data feeds to establish a platform to make offers of compensation from multiple brokers is not allowed. Violation of these rules will be enforced immediately and will result in the immediate suspension of the respondent's access to any MLS data and data feeds until the violation is corrected. Can subscribers and participants report potential violations? Yes. On properties that are listed in our system, use the Report It tool. Be very specific in the Notes section. Compliance Department staff will need as much detail as possible. Do not call Triad MLS or local associations to report issues. All reporting must be in writing. If the property is in the system, use Report It. Clear cooperation potential violations can be reported by using this potential clear cooperation violation complaint form. Also found Matrix Help Triad MLS form section. And email any potential rule violations to the appropriate compliance department. Agents who report potential rule violations identity will be kept very confidential. Only compliance staff and possibly association staff will know because further information may be needed. Likewise, the outcome of any reported issues are also kept confidential. 
Submit any questions you may have about compliance to your compliance department.